All right, today I'm gonna to talk about technology systems. What is a system? A system is a group of parts that work together. All pieces of technology can be considered systems if they have multiple parts, they work together to do something. So for instance, this car pictured below is considered a system. It has multiple parts, they're all working together to get you from point A to point B. What is a subsystem? A subsystem is a larger, a smaller system within a larger system. So for instance, in this particular uh, car example, the car in, as a whole is a system while all these other smaller systems are called subsystems. For instance, the engine has multiple parts. They're all working together to, to make the car uh, have power. Um, brakes, the brakes have multiple parts. They're working together to stop your car. So although there's uh, some parts involved, they're all smaller systems within the larger system in itself. The more complex the system is, the more subsystems that they should have. There are two types of models that we're gonna go over, an open loop system and a closed loop system. The open loop system looks like this. It has an input, a process, and an output. The input is what we want the system to do or the desired result. So, when we're looking at the car example, what do we want the car to do? We want to get to the grocery store or have your parents drive you to school. The process is the actions that lead to an output. There's a lot that's involved in the process. It could be where you're actually putting together the car itself or just getting into the car, turning it on uh, with your keys, um, having you know the process of starting the car, and then driving uh, to the store. And the output is the actual results. So if everything worked correctly, the process was performed correctly, your output should match the input. The actual result should match the desired result. The closed loop system is a little different. The closed loop system operates with a feedback loop. The feedback loop in con contains a monitor and an adjust. So these two parts of the system is called a feedback loop. The monitor compares the output to the input. Usually with, within um, technology, people have to monitor some of the, the systems to see if it's working correctly. For instance, if you're using a hot glue gun in my classroom and you're operating it and you're not paying attention, Next thing you know, you could be burning yourself because you're not monitoring the glue gun. If the glue gun was getting too close to your skin, obviously you would see that and you'd make an adjustment and move it away. More complex systems have these monitors built in and they're called sensors. And they're watching over the system. For instance, um, like in our classrooms, to save electricity, there's automatic uh, sensors that will automatically turn off the lights if nobody is in the room. So it's monitoring movement in the room, and then it adjusts, it turns off the lights. There are several systems like this now as you use technology today. For instance, when you go into the grocery store, you don't have to open the door. They automatically open for you. So there's multiple open and closed loop systems that we use every day. Remember, an open loop system cannot be controlled, meaning that humans must adjust the system. They include like a traffic light, stove, a kitchen sink, or a saw. A closed loop system can be controlled because of the feedback loop. It can monitor and adjust itself. Examples include a cell phone, okay, when you're texting your friend, and you misspell a word, it automatically corrects it for you. A night light, similar to the, the lights in our room, as I told you, as it lights, uh, if the lights are on, the night light stays off. If the lights go off, the night light turns